Hello and welcome to this video on variables and constants in Go language by IntelliPad. Go, which was developed by Google in 2007, has redefined what it means to write beautiful, readable and maintainable codes with its clean syntax and expressive power. So today with this particular video, we are going to cover a very basic concept of variables and constants in Go language. But before we begin, do enable the subscribe button and bell icon for the IntelliPad YouTube channel so that you won't miss any updates coming from our end. Okay guys, if we talk about variables and constants in any programming language, then the working and their use remains the same in all programming languages. The only thing that changes is the way of writing or the syntax along with some additional rules according to that particular programming language. So variables are essentially a containers or temporary databases that are used to store the data. Now, if we talk about declaring variables in Go language, here you can see that we start with the var keyword, which is used to declare variable, followed by variable name, and then the data type associated with that variable. And this part clearly explains how to declare variables in Go language, right? Now moving forward, let's see how to assign values to the variables. So there are mainly three ways to do that. First one is we pass the var keyword with the variable name and the data types associated with that variable. And then we assign a value to that variable. Like you can see here, var and then the name of that variable that is num and then the data type to that. And after that, we have assigned the value 10 to that variable name num, right? Now coming to the second way is to pass the var keyword with the variable name and then assign a value to that variable. So here the compiler automatically detects the type by looking at the value that we have provided to that variable. So in this case, we have provided the value 10 that is of integer type. So the variable num will be of int type. So that will be automatically detected by the compiler. Now coming to the third way is to use this operator that is colon equals to to assign the value like here you can see 10 to the variable name num. So this is basically the shorthand notation to assign values to the variables. Now let's try to implement this here in this online compiler. So as I said, first we will declare a variable here. So I will write var keyword and then the name of that variable. So in that case, I will write here num and then the data type. Right. So this is the first way. And then I have to pass the value to that variable. So I have passed here 10 and then we will print here num, right? So I will write here num. You can see we are getting the output 10, right? So this is the first way. Now coming to the second way, that is we are not going to define the data type of num here, right? And we'll see if we are getting any error or not. So you can see here that we are not getting any error and we are getting the output of 10, right? Now coming to the third way, that is shorthand notation, right? So we will write here colon equals to. So this is the third way. So let's try to run this. So you can see this, you are getting the output 10, right? So this is the third way, which is said as the shorthand notation. So this is the third way of assigning values to a variable, right? Now, these are some of the important notes that we should keep on mind while working with the variables in Go language. So the first one is if a variable is not assigned any value, a default value is assigned to it. So here, as you can see, in this case, the variable number will print the output zero because zero is the default value of int data type, right? Coming to the second point in the Go language, every variable must have a data type associated with it. If not, then the program throws an error. So in the first line, you can see we have written var num and we haven't defined any data type there, right? So that will throw an error because we haven't defined any data type to that num variable. And on the second line, you can see we have written var num1 and then we have defined a data type for that variable name num1, right? And in third line, you can see we have written var num2 equals to 10. So here we haven't defined any data type, but we assign a value to the variable num2. So here the compiler automatically detects the data type with the help of the value that we have provided 
to that variable. Now coming to the third point, in Go language, we cannot change the data type of a variable once it is declared. So in Go language, we cannot change the data type of our variables once it get declared. So if a variable is of int type, then next time we are providing any value, it should be of int type only. If we provide it with the string type, then it will throw an error. So the first point that I have said that if we are not assigning a variable with any values, then a default value will get printed for that particular variable. So let's first try that. So I will write here where and then I will write here now and provide it with the keyword, right? Now let's try to print this. So you can see here for this num variable, I haven't assigned it with any value. And here when we are printing that variable num, we are getting the output of zero because as I said in the presentation that int data type is having the default value of zero, right? Now, if we look to the second note that I've said in the presentation, that is every variable must have a data type associated with it, right? So let's say here I am not defining any data type, right? And see what we will get here. So you can see here that we are getting an error that it is expecting a type, right? So here it's saying that define a data type here. Now let's define a data type here and we'll see. See, we are not getting any error right and if we are not defining any data type and assigning it with a value then also we should don't get any error like you can see here we are getting the output and we are not getting any error that to define a data type for the num variable right now if we look on to the third point that I have said that once the data type of a variable is declared it cannot be changed right so now if I try to change the value of num to I say string data type and I will write here hello right so you will see that we will get an error error see we are getting an error cannot use hello untyped string constant as int value is in assignment so here it is saying that we should assign here the integer type only and not the string or any other kind of data types. So if I write here 20, then it should get updated. See, now you can see the value of num gets updated to 20, right? Now let's see how to create multiple variables at once. So in Go language, it is possible to declare multiple variables at once by separating them with commas. Like you can see here where name comma age equals to we are provided with Gotham and 22 right and here Gotham is assigned to the name variable and 22 is assigned to the age variable and the same thing can also be done with the shorthand operator like you can see here we have done name comma age and then the shorthand notation and then we have provided it with the value Gotham comma 27 right now let's try to do the same thing here and see how it is working. I will write here where name comma age and then I will assign with the value. So I will write here Rahul and I will provide it with the age 26 right and then I will print first I will print the name and then I will print the age. Now I will run that. So now you can see we are getting Rahul and the age 26 right so like that we can create multiple variables at once and let's also try with the shorthand notation and we'll see how it is working so for that we don't need where keyword here right so this is basically the shorthand notation so let's also try to run with this so you can see it's working we are getting name and the age right Okay, now let us see some of the rules for naming variables in Go language. So every programming language is having their particular rules and regulations for naming a variables or we can say constants also, right? So here for Go language, the first one is a variable name should consist of alphabets, digits and an underscore. Second, variables cannot have other symbols like dollar, at the rate, hashtags, etc. So any other symbols other than underscore we can't use in the variable names. 
Third, variable names cannot begin with a number. So here in this table below, you can see I have provided with the illegal variable names and the good variable names. So the first one you can see I have written one where. So that variable name is not legal. So instead you can see on the good variable name side, I have written num1. So a variable name can end with a digit, but it can't start with a digit, right? Coming to fourth point, a variable name cannot be a reserved word like int, type, for, and etc. Because they are the reserved word that are used as a part of Go language, right? So here in this below table, you can see some illegal variable names that cannot be used as well as some good variable names that you should consider while naming any variables. Now moving on to constant in Go language. So constants are the fixed values that cannot be changed once it gets declared. In Go language, we use the const keyword to create these constant variables. Here, as you can see the syntax to declare any constant, we use const keyword followed by the name of that constant and the value that we want to assign for that constant, right? So here, as you can see, the value 3.141 that we have to the constant pi is the initial and final value that cannot be changed later. And that's why they are called as constants. Their value remain constant throughout the program. So now here in this online compiler, let's also try to work with some constant and see how it is different from variable. So I will write here constant that is const keyword and then I will write pi equals to provide it with some value. So I will write here 3.141, right? And then I will print pi here. If I run this, you can see we are getting the value of pi 3.141, right? Now, if I try to change the value of this constant, I will write here pi equals to 2.467. Okay, I'm just writing a random number here. And if I run this now, you can see here we are getting an error. See, cannot assign to pi, right? So now if I do one thing, I change this constant to variable here, then you can notice that the value of pi will be updated here. See, our value of pi gets updated to this value here, right? So that is the main difference between variable and constant, that the value of variables can be changed later in the program, but the value of constant remain constant throughout the program and it can't be changed. So that is the main difference between variables and constant in not only Go language, but in all programming languages, right? So that's all we have for this video. I hope you got a good understanding about constant and variables in Go language. And if you found this video helpful, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow mates. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular updates like this. Thank you so much. Just a quick info guys, Intellipet offers you a Golang certification course which will help you to acquire expertise in this popular programming language. This course is designed by industry experts focusing on more hands-on approach to training you through a real-time project. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in their successful career transitions. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to a new height. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take the first step towards career growth with the Golang developer role.